Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com for Friday, April 29th, the final day of the spring meet. And we have a graded stakes race to close out the spring meet, the grade three bewitched. And I'm Tom Leach, along with Keelan's director of mutual and simulcasting, Jim Goodman. We gave you the late pick four yesterday, so uh, you didn't break the bank, but hopefully you, you cashed on the, on the Wednesday card and hopefully you had some success on Thursday. Getaway day, time to get even on Friday, Jim. And um, we'll start by trying to help them out in the grade three bewitched at a mile and a half on the turf. Got to be some give left in the ground uh, because of the, uh, the rains earlier in the week. So where did you land on the bewitched? Yeah, you would think there would be. Um, I, I couldn't narrow it, that narrow it down past two horses. Um, Alorda, the German horse for Chad Brown and La Peru, is my top choice. Um, has raced on soft ground overseas and did well in uh, in France on soft ground. So you would think that uh, she would like a little bit of give in the ground, even though she hasn't caught that here. She ran well last year in the QE2. Uh, ran behind Miss Temple City, who's come back and won a couple since then against the boys. So I think Alorda is, is a very solid choice here. Again, we talk about Chad Brown all the time. He's still only got one win. He's won for 19 with seven seconds. Well, he got a second win on Wednesday. Oh, the that's last right. Race he did get Wednesday. a second on Wednesday. So, yeah. But, but so who would have thought that he, you know, he'd be two for 20 or something yeah. like that? <clears throat> so he's cold, but Le Peru's hot at the end of the meet. So uh, I'm going to take Alorda as my top choice. But the other horse that, that you've got to throw in there is the horse that ships from Santa Anita, and it's a personal uh, enemy of mine who beat me out of a Del Mar <laughs> trip. Uh, Gerana Sadad, is that close enough? Sure. The, from Uruguay. And uh, at 71 to 1, I had a lead in a Del Mar tournament, going to get a $7,000 buy in, a trip to Del Mar in the summertime, and comes down the stretch and, and, and wins at 71 to 1, and two people pass me. So uh, that horse owes me, so I'm going to, I'm going to, Put her in there. Uh, seven-year-old mare only had raced five times in North America, but uh, she's really good right now. And uh, I think that uh, Quick Casablanca, who she beat that time, and Quick, Quick Casablanca came back and beat her when she was three to one the last time out. But she's right there too. So those two on top. Um, Song of Ice and Fire for Bill Mott and Lascano. You've got to throw her in there. And uh, I think button down with Josie Carroll and and, and John Velasquez underneath. But the uh, if I'm going to do the pick four, I'm going to stick with my two choices, Alorda the 8 and Gerana Sadad the 11. One note I will tell you as you look at this field, uh, Vicki Oliver, whose barn has been hot this meet, has two in here. And um, the I talked to her for the Keeneland YouTube channel, and she said that Personal Diary really doesn't like soft turf. And if it's really soft, they will scratch her. Uh, but if it's, uh, you know, not – if it's not too bad, they'll probably go ahead and let her run because she's doing so well. But understand that she's not going to get kind of the uh, the type of turf that she really likes in this spot. I ended up going to Button Down. Uh, just missed in a grade one last fall. And I like the way that this horse is working. And I think she, uh, Josie Carroll's with a limited number of starters, has done well. So I, I think she could uh, get the money in here. Um, I like Return to Grace a little bit. A uh, four-year-old that I think uh, may have a nice season. Um, Olorda and Song of Fire and Ice are, are two I uh, definitely want on my ticket. I, I end up going deep here in the pick four. And uh, I use Personal Diary, but I uh, could certainly leave her out if uh, it stays wet. And then Al's Gal, uh, I liked a little bit, the 11. Uh, so let's go to the pick four, which starts in the seventh race. And I'm singling Gimlet in the first leg for Pletcher. Just missed it a grade three and a couple of good local works. Uh, so uh, that one's my win pick and, and a single for the pick four. In the eighth leg, eighth race, I'm going to take two horses, or excuse me, three horses. Spank, who made a big move forward in the third start and I think may be able to be the controlling speed in here, but I want three classy gray lassie and one strike back fast. I'm going to use all the ones I mentioned in the Bewitched. Six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, and five. And then in the last race, I'm going to take Shopping with Bill. Um, got a wide trip last time, and uh, Ben Colbrook's horses have generally outrun their odds. But Boogie Woogie Dancing, the seven, and Rohan, the one, are the others I'll use. So one by three by six by three for me. How about you? It was a little bit chalky on Wednesday, and so our pick four didn't pay much. I think you got a shot at getting a couple prices here. So I'm going to go deep in the first leg. I'm going to use uh, Tequila Joe, the three, Dissident, the five, the seven, Gimlet, your choice, which should be the obvious favorite for Velasquez and Pletcher. Nine, Barton Lodge for Doug O'Neill. And ten, Remembering Mickey um, 
for Roger Atfield. So three, five, seven, nine, ten. Going to stick with the two horses in the eighth. Spank your improving horse for Al Stahl and a very impressive, classy Gray Lassie who won by ten and three quarters last out at Fairgrounds and says as rider please, which is always something you like to see in a first race because uh, ran one ten and four uh, at Fairgrounds, pretty good speed with an eighty five buyer figure and didn't have any competition in the race at all. So be interesting to see how good this filly is. I'm sticking with the eight and the eleven or Lorda and um, Gerana Sadad in the uh, feature race. And then <clears throat> the last race is not a great race. It's a maiden claimer, 20,000. I'm going to go all. i got no idea. The horse that's shopping with Bill probably is the best horse in there, but none of them look very good to me, so I'm going to take all. That's a $70 ticket, and hopefully we'll get out well. I want to talk about a little bit about the uh, Super I-5, the Pick 6, and the Pick 5 are all mandatory payouts on Friday. It's the end of the meet, so that's the Kentucky horse racing rules. We do have a shot, you need to be aware, in that 10th race, we only have seven horses in. So if there were to be a scratch, there would not be a super high five in that race. And therefore, if there were a carryover from Thursday's racing, it would carry over to the fall. And I don't think we've ever had to do that here, but there's no choice in a super high five if you can't have seven runners. So take a look at that. It's um, it's an interesting race to handicap if there is a super high five. And the pick six pays out and the pick five pays out on Friday. And don't forget, there is the shuttle service from the simulcasting at the Red Mile here in the Lexington market uh, for the final day. It's a great way to avoid uh, uh, the parking and, and, and making a long walk is just get dropped off right at the gate and uh, take the shuttle back to the Red Mile and park there. Uh, we will do, of course, our regular Saturday podcast. We'll take a look at the uh, pick four for the opening night card at Churchill Downs. But for now, best of luck on the final race day of the spring meet with your wagers for KeelanSelect.com. This is the In the Money podcast.